Hello and welcome to Critical Junction episode one. I'm Mark. Jose. And uh, our special guest today is Luke Leving, half of the band Muffler Crunch. Hi Luke, thanks for being here. Hey, no problem. Thank you for having me. So um, I guess what we're talking about today, Luke posted a pretty straightforward question on his Facebook a little while ago asking if anyone had seen a UFO. And from there, um, I guess it kind of opened up a pretty big debate on whether or not uh, you know, the phenomenon is actually real and if witnesses are credible, that kind of thing. So Luke, I guess, why don't you start by telling us what happened? Uh, in terms of what, what I saw? Sort yeah. Of thing? Okay, so I saw, uh, I would suggest that I saw two UFOs in my life. One was in uh, childhood when I was very young, and it was basically following um, what looked like sort of the faintness of a satellite at night, a faint sort of um, glowing star off in the daylight in the, on the horizon. And uh, it seemed normal, was following a straight path, and then seemed to suddenly veer, uh, change directions completely and zoom off really far away. But of course, this is in childhood, so I, you know it's in a sense less credible as a memory than a more recent event that occurred with uh, Angie and I, my bandmate. Uh, we were at Bedford Mills, Ontario, and we went for a uh, walk. And we're assuming, if you want to look at it geographically, we're looking at we left Bedford Mills. It's like the mill itself. That's where we were staying. And we went for a walk from there. And it's beside water. I don't, I guess it would be considered a lake. Um, we got a bit of, away from the house so that we could see the nighttime sky. And I was following what I thought was a satellite in the sky, very faint. Uh, and it was following a straight line. But then suddenly it seemed to be emitting uh, a light off in another direction, uh, like uh, like like a light as bright as the lights from the airport, let's say, for, for the airplanes coming in. But the direction of the light seemed to be pointing at us all of a sudden, like it, it turned and sort of pointing at us, and it lit up an area, I'd say, about as bright as a football field. I can say that because of the road, the way the road is, the lake, and then the trees. So it was lighting up us and the trees on the other side of the lake the forest there, so a fairly large area. And we ran like crazy when we saw that, but that was my UFO experience. So the bright light thing was, I guess, the most awesome thing that happened, like the most fantastical kind of thing. Well, yeah, that was my, my UFO experience. So what, how long ago was that? Uh, that was, geez, that could have been like um, eight years ago maybe now, nine years ago kind of thing, a while ago. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. How long did the light show last? Well, we were following the satellite for long enough to, to watch it from, you know, uh, maybe not exactly one point of the horizon to the middle of the sky kind of thing. And normal, you know, satellite speed, mm -hmm. like like watching it for a while sort of thing. Like, let's say, I don't know if that would be a minute or so, you know, okay. the speed that satellites move across the sky. Yeah. And then it's suddenly turning and shining the light. That could have been maybe you know, 10, 15 seconds of that. Like seeing it shining the light first. The brightness of the light and, and seeing sort of the extent of the light, like you can see from an airport light, you know, like you can see that it's a big light, sort of bluish in hue. And then it coming and turning towards us. Like it did look like the thing that was turning to look at us and shine light on us. I don't know if it actually was, but that it was so far away, no sound either was the thing that was the scariest. You know? mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't remember if I answered your question or not. But. You did. Yeah. <laughs> as far as the surroundings, it sounds like you were in the middle of nowhere. I mean, is there a possibility that it could have been something else other than, you know, what you may have thought it was? Well, yeah. What What did you think it was? First well, of all, I guess. I mean, I wasn't. At first, I thought it was a satellite, right? Right. Uh, then, uh, I would suggest at the time. It's just fear. Like, you're just going, I don't know what that is. So you immediately think, UFO. Like, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know if I was thinking aliens or not, <laughs> you know, at that time. I, I, I do, I'm not necessarily a believer. And most certainly who I was with, Angie, is not a believer as well. Like, she's, I'd suggest, even more skeptical. Um, what did we think it was? I don't know. We, I don't think we attributed thought to what it was at that point. We just ran because we were scared because there's something we didn't understand you know right. and could have been something else you know i think now in terms of the popularity of uh what do you call them drones because it was completely silent but it's the size of the light i guess and the brightness of the light that mm -hmm. i still have a problem with and a drone you would have sound so you would be able to kind of identify that it would be something fl hovering around or flying around if yeah. it was a drone yeah. But, uh, yeah the no sound 
Yeah, no Usually sound. Usually is a pretty clear indicator, but... Yeah, yeah right. and the seeming distance that it seemed to be at. You know, a very, very faint light suddenly turning to a super bright light was weird. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. yeah. It's really... That's fucked up. Yeah, very scary. But, yeah, I guess, um, you know, the, the discussion on your Facebook after you posted uh, the question, has anyone seen a UFO, uh, kind of centered... Like I, I kind of got that whole thing started with you know, extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence because, you, yeah, sure, you saw something, right? But to then make the the leap and suggest that it might have been some kind of extraterrestrial craft or whatever, you know, that's that that requires a huge amount of evidence. Like, way, and someone else on your face, I'm not going to name names, obviously, but someone else on your on the discussion was saying that you know if you do the research, the evidence is out there, but didn't actually offer up any. Kind of credible evidence to support what he was claiming. Like, what was he claiming? I mentioned that a bit. Uh, well, he was talking about the the disclosure project, and you know how all these eyewitnesses <coughs> testified in front of a congressional hearing to to say what they saw, what they think is going on, how the government is hiding all of this information about UFOs, how they're hiding or using technology from extraterrestrial recovered craft. But again, this they're not anteing up and providing any kind of actual evidence. Sure, like these people are high ranking individuals. Like Paul Hellier, the, the former Minister of Canadian Defense, testified in front of this hearing too. But just because he's a former minister does not necessarily mean that he's more credible than somebody else. Like that's an appeal to authority. That's one of those classic logical fallacies that people automatically assume to be, you know, more legitimate than the random person saying, I saw this because he's a minister. Well, that, you know, again, that doesn't really, that doesn't change anything. It's just someone else making another claim. Sure. So, yeah, um, I mean, this individual on Facebook was kind of going along the same line, just saying, you know, the information is out there, all you have to do is dig for it. Well, we have been digging for it, and despite that, all we keep hearing are more claims, more supposed eyewitness testimony. Anyone can go out there and claim anything, but unless you provide something to back up your story, then you're just making another claim. Right. Neil deGrasse Tyson, in one of his um, his interviews, said something I found was really interesting. He said, "You know, if ever I'm abducted by aliens, I'm gonna I'm gonna distract the alien, and be like, look over there, and then grab the alien, I don't know, ashtray or something, and bring it back <laughs> with me whenever they put me back on Earth, so I can, you know, show this you know, this thing coming from a fucking spaceship. You know, that's a, see what I'm looking for would be, I guess, the Edward Snowden of the UFO conspiracy theories. Not you know somebody who doesn't only blow the whistle, but who provides." the backup to it. Because, you know, Snowden blew the whistle on all this stuff, and he provided the emails to go with it. So, you know, there's something. Well, unfortunately, the UFOs aren't emailing us, though. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not suggesting we steal alien emails, but, you know, if, if someone, for example, the former head of uh, Skunk Works at Lockheed Martin uh, famously said that they were using alien technology. Well, if that's true, you know, give us the blueprints, give us the gifts, the schematics, you know, produce some. Right, right, right. So, but I guess he may not have access to those things now. And I'm not. I'm not fighting for it. I'm just saying that he probably wouldn't. You know, well, if, if he's like, if he's not part of it anymore, and that's why he's talking about it, he therefore doesn't have access to it anymore. But I think he made. I'm like, don't quote me on this, but I think he made the claim when he was still in his position. I see. I see. Even with access, though, it'd be completely impossible for him to just you know, carry something and go. Um, so, I mean, that's why we have whistleblowers now, like, that have to kind of secretly take this information right. and, you know, show the world. But that's where it becomes an almost impossible because, I mean, to find evidence means that we'd have to either be at these, like, you know, military stations or whatever it is in order for us to actually see the evidence. Once we see it, to take it, that's a whole different story. So, you know, it's almost impossible for us to kind of have this evidence. Well, okay, so let's say, Mark, you are representing the ultimate skeptic, and we say, what evidence would to you uh, give it credibility? Like, where you would go, okay, I see this evidence now, and I, I now believe that it is a true thing. There are, like, what are we looking for? UFOs and the connection to aliens? No, not necessarily, are we? Or is that what we're looking for evidence of? Or well, if people are making that claim, then yeah, like, if right. you provide something to back it up. So what what kind of evidence would you be looking for? Like, what the, kind of evidence would you believe? What would I believe? Mm -hmm. Well, short of seeing an alien coming out of a landed spacecraft or something, it's pretty hard to say. I think. So you're talking about direct, direct contact. Yeah, I I, I, I want to see some. I want to see that. Like I I'm I want to believe this is true 
more than anyone. Okay, but there you're talking about direct experience, but I'm talking about proof coming from someone else. Is there anything that can be provided from someone else that could act as proof? <clears throat> yeah, like if, again, if uh, Mr. Skunkworks guy were to come out and be like, here are the blueprints to uh, an alien replica vehicle using advanced technology that we discovered by, you know, taking backwards engineering this craft and then demonstrating how it works. I would believe that. Okay. So, so proof of the technology you're looking for? That? Sure. Like if, if people are making the claim that we're using alien tech, then prove it. Show us the tech. Show us the original device, or if it doesn't exist anymore, how you went about backwards engineering. You want to see the notes. Your teacher, yeah. you want to see the notes on the map equation. Show your work. Yeah. Show Even work. then, it's like, you know, you can completely make up this stuff. and. But if know, it works, then, you know, then if it works. If it works, if yes. It works. Like yeah. it, if they somehow figured out a gravity warp drive, you know. But there's the thing, us as, like, you know, we're getting so advanced that we can probably start doing that on our own within the next couple of decades, if that. I mean, we don't necessarily need this alien technology because we're smart enough to actually figure these things out for ourselves, right? Well, so, we're smart enough to figure out the theory. Yeah, but for sure. the technology doesn't necessarily exist yet. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Like, if there's that bridge between theory and the development of the tech, show us that bridge. <clears throat> like, to me, unless an alien is actually handing over those blueprints... I still wouldn't believe it. You know? So that makes it cool. tough. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> well, can I say, like, having seen the the this UFO, and by that I just mean unidentified flying object. If I didn't have uh, Angie to turn to and ask, "Hey, did we see that?" I wouldn't believe it. I swear to God, even having seen it, it's very strange to even process mentally. You know, and I try not to in a sense, visually remember what happened because I kind of don't want to deteriorate that memory and make it a movie in my mind sort of thing, you know right. what I mean? Um, but it's also maybe psychologically hard to deal with. When I put it on Facebook, I was putting it out there to see if other people have seen it because it's something that's difficult to talk about mm -hmm. because you don't believe it when you see it. Uh, you know, if I saw Bigfoot and I smelt Bigfoot, I wouldn't believe it, you know? And it, it, like we'd be looking at it and we'd be going, "What? what is that? And we wouldn't be able to process it. Like, you're in shock, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And to think about it, mm -hmm. well, I you think also that's, don't believe it. I think that's one of the downfalls of, you know, eyewitness testimony and, and uh, memory in general. Like, as, as a rule, human memory fucking sucks. Like, it's just, it's terrible. It, and if, it, if you remember something out of sequence, then you blow the whole thing out of proportion, right? Like, it's, it's really hard to remember something 100% accurately, which is why eyewitness testimony is notoriously unreliable and it degrades yeah. over time uh, yeah i don't think you can remember anything correctly like i'm even just thinking of food from childhood like mm -hmm. it does not taste like what you remember to taste like when you try alpha Gettys again you know <laughs> <laughs> it's always different um yeah i don't know yeah well i'm still interested in proof though so what 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 else could it take? Like, would video is video proof enough for you these days? Do you it, find uh, these days? I think video is really kind of it's difficult to to place any kind of faith in because it's so easy to fake a video. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm surprised Photoshop doesn't have a add UFO button in the in this latest version. You know, but but can you not recognize uh, digitally when something has been yeah, manipulated? Yeah, you like can. that's still recognizable and easily so. I would assume like some even the experts have kind of difficulty you know, recognizing if it is a fake or not. I mean, it could take a long time before they determine, no, this is a fake, but, you know, just looking at it at first glance, it could fool anyone, right? right? So, you know, that's, I think, the problem with media today is that now you can take any sort of video. I think I saw one of a, a giant man in Japan, and, you know, basically they took this giant, like, 15-foot, like, Asian guy who came into a temple of some sort, and but he took this video posted it online and basically said there's our proof of giant uh, you know giants living among us well no it actually ended up being just sort of a short movie that uh, they were doing and whoever took it obviously wanted to misinform everyone so you know there's things that like this that you know you can just take any anything that is kind of unexplained put it on a video and just put in subtitles in there saying Look at this, you know. Right. You gotta wonder, you know. Yeah. So there was um there was a video circulating again or recirculating, I guess, on Facebook just recently about I think you saw it too, Jose. The um the interview with the supposed Area Fifty One <laughs> alien. Yes, yes. I've seen it a few times now where they posted it as this is Snowden's video of, you know, actual alien interview. 
Well, no, I mean... <laughs> Which interview was that? Is that the interview with the gargly-voiced alien? What, yeah. What does the alien say? Yeah, Do you he, remember? I can't remember exactly what he says throughout the whole thing, but he's, um, he's saying that, you know, he is a direct descendant from the future of, of us, of humanity, essentially, and he came here to, to find the proof that he's actually descended from us, because we end up annihilating ourselves at some point between uh, now and his suppo- supposed point in time. Um, you know, and we end up doing that through nuclear war because of things like dogma. And so the interviewer asks him... Political like, and religious dogma. Yeah, that, that's the one, yeah, yeah, political and religious dogma. So the interviewer is asking him all these questions, um, like what's what's the purpose of life and all that stuff. It's, it's a pretty cool right, right. video. And he to, says that the meaning of life is ascribed, so it's not meaning of life that they understand, but nature yeah, of, yeah. Of, of existence kind of thing. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really cool video. If you can find it, we'll post the, uh, post the link in the comment, uh, the yeah, yeah, description some, at some point. Um, but yeah, like that kind of thing, it's super easy to fake. It looked, it looked really cool. It was really well done in a sense that it can fool anyone. Yeah. I mean, anybody that looks at this video could believe right away. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you look at sort of the conversation between, uh, the alien and whoever, you know, is interviewing him and the whole thing just kind of, wow, you, you actually could make this into a reality. Yeah. Like, you know, so, <laughs> and um, I think just because of what, the uh, quote-unquote alien was saying, and it, it's the kind of thing you want to believe, yeah, to be sure. sure. Well, that's what I was going to say, because I, I looked into that video as well, but it was because of what the alien was saying that I looked into it. Because the faking of, a, of an alien interview is kind of easy these days with the CGI and stuff like that. So sure, even if it was fake, sure. Uh, it looked great, but it was what the alien was saying there, and I remember looking into it, and Whitley, Whitley Stryber, or I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that author's name, but the guy that wrote Communion. Right. He liked that video, and he said, you know, I think that this is uh, this could be faked. And he suggested it was probably faked because of the language that the alien was using. It wasn't actually uh, common phrases back then, but are common phrases now. Mm-hmm. So the way it was speaking, he suggested, it was the, the biggest proof that it may actually be fake. But he did say that he liked what the alien was saying and where it was coming from, and that was in line with what he felt the aliens, that he claims to have had contact with, are like and what they're also saying as well so yeah but, i mean you would hope that you know if aliens were among us they would be sort of in the direction of this alien interview where it talks about compassion and just sort of well, enlightened watching. being i guess exactly sort of yeah, yeah so i mean the whole thing was just him kind of watching over us and just making sure that we're not destroying ourselves, you know, so... <laughs> but also claiming that we do destroy ourselves exactly. in that video, because yeah. there was some sort of nuclear war, and the reason he was there was to pick up, basically, well, to, to observe, because proof of us had disappeared, mm-hmm. like, we've destroyed ourselves so much that we haven't left proof mm-hmm. of our existence. Yeah. But I think that raises another another question, like, why, why is it that we assume that just because a being would be more evolved than us, that they would be more compassionate? That they wouldn't be hostile. What? Where? Where did that assumption come from? I I don't think it's necessarily true. Like you look at us. We're more evolved than fucking chimps or whatever. And <laughs> we're the we're the most warlike species that we know of. Yeah, yeah, but there you could suggest that we just have a, a certain concept of what evolution is, and we haven't quite achieved it yet. But we've set our scopes for it. And in setting our scopes, I would suggest are the religions of the world is the setting our scopes for this higher state of consciousness. Well, we can we can set our scopes, but why why make the assumption that uh, again that a, a more evolved species would be necessarily compassionate? Why wouldn't they be more warlike? Why wouldn't they be like? conquering aliens. I guess it goes against what we see as evolution. Well, that's a pretty human-centric way of looking about the rest of the yeah, universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is, for sure. You would have uh, to, I mean. <laughs> but it's it's not necessarily human-centric. It's only human-centric because we're coming at it from a human perspective. But other other consciousness could come at it at, at that same perspective and it not be considered human. Well, I'm labeling it human because we're human, no? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think it's in any way fair to assume that our interpretation of the universe would be the right one. You know, like, uh, who's to say? But right, like the meaning of life is ascribed, right? So there is no right or wrong. It's I mean, just described. I, by like, humans. our interpretation of the universe is the correct one in that case. Right, right, right. Well, we're creating correct. That's a bit of a problem. Well, depending on what correct is and what we consider to be problems, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's really vague. <laughs> but yeah, like, it's. I don't know. I, I don't know why we think they would be here to help. Like, if they are, if 
whoever they are, are actually visiting us, why would they be here to help? You know what? Well, in that video, he never said he was here to help. Mm -hmm. He said he was just observing. Mm -hmm. They were when he asked for a life philosophy, he gave the one of compassion, but he wasn't saying he was actually here on any compassionate business or anything like that. I'm not that. talking specifically about that video. Okay, just right. you know, in general, with this whole what are they calling it now? The UAP phenomenon, the like unidentified aerial phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I think is what they're. I don't. Does anyone is know why the they new, shifted away is from that? Is that the, the new name for UFOs? Yeah, like, I, anyone know why they shifted away from UFO all of a sudden? No idea. Is it like, I don't know, why? Is UFO too crackpot these days? <laughs> <laughs> did, say, yeah, did, it, did someone get offended by UFO somehow <laughs> and they have to change the lingo? Oh, no, it's not politically correct. We have to come <laughs> We've offended flyers. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't identify all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It's off limits. But uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> Unidentified aerial phenomenon. Right. Mm -hmm. Why they changed the name, but uh, yeah, what did they do? Oh, well, they may be suggesting that it's not flying; it's hovering. You know, maybe it's different concepts of what flying is. Maybe flying doesn't cut the mustard <laughs> for all of the visual things that they're seeing. No, it's visual phenomenon. It's aerial phenomenon, but not necessarily uh, restricted to flying. So if something can just <clears throat> pop into existence at some point, then something can just pop into existence. Not necessarily so disappear, flying, not fly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes I sense. guess that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Well, that's why. <laughs> we'll have to look into that. Um, yeah, like, it's... <sighs> evidence is what the debate the debate came, came down to at its core. And you were just saying that the only evidence for you is your own eyes, your own sensations. So you trust your own your own five senses. Is oh, God, no. God, no. I don't, I don't trust my senses at okay, all. Okay, but you're but, still drawing the line there in terms of evidence. Yeah, like, I, I want to see something concrete. I want to see... Something that came like if someone is going to claim that they uh, that the okay the government is using alien technology okay or that the government recovered a craft that crashed in some desert somewhere let's see it you want to see the paperwork I want to see the paper I want to see yeah I want to see the paperwork I want to see the I want to see the thing that crashed well it sounds like you want to see the new technology that's been sure. discovered yeah the something that's different from what we had before. You're suggesting it is possible that someone could come up with these theories anyways. For sure. Well, my other thought is more what happens when we actually do see this stuff. I mean, your reaction as far as, you know, your experience seeing the, the lights in the sky brought fear. And, uh, you know, what if they were to kind of publicize these things? How much fear it would, would go around? Fear. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's that's the suggested reason, I guess, why they would be hiding it as a government or whatever, you know, if they did have the, the technology or the photographic proof or something like that. You know, if they did have proof, they're, they're probably hiding it because of panic and stuff like that. Well, that's what they're suggesting. I have, I have a hard time believing that the government, specifically the U.S. government, because they, for some reason, are at the center of the, whatever this is. I have a hard time believing that they would be able to keep anything of this magnitude a secret for so long. Well, and they ha really haven't. It's yeah, just that exactly. we don't believe it. Right. <laughs> but you could say that there's been slip ups and people that have claimed to go in, like, you know, high ranking officials that have claimed to have gone into underground bunkers and suddenly seen aliens and started shooting at them and killed some. You know, like, I don't know who this guy is. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, there's a few whistleblowers as far yeah, as yeah. people who have been in Area 51 involved in the whole situation kind of talk to their families about the experiences that they had while at Area 51. And, you know, this is their families coming out with the stories that they would tell, right? So, I mean, as far as names, I don't have any names, but I have seen a lot of uh, cases where, you know, there are stories, the evidence is not there, but can is it credible enough for you to believe? Really? Have you heard of stories of evidence being stolen yeah. by by the government? As soon as there is evidence, it is basically stolen. The men in black do show up, and then it is taken away. Kind of yeah. I've heard a lot of a lot of those stories. But again, how credible is it? Is it is it just another story? Like I I don't I don't know I don't know I I want this I I fucking I want this shit to be real because that be it would be mind boggling. It would open up a whole new interpretation of existence. Right? If they if the government suddenly came out and said, yeah, all this is true. We have E.T. in this truck waiting to speak next at this press conference uh, <laughs> just to say, hey, I'm here, you know, traveled all these billions of light years to come and look at you fuckers because you've been, you're on the verge of destroying yourselves, so better stop it if you want to join the rest of the intergalactic community. I, I, want, I want the Federation to be real from Star Trek. <laughs> that would be awesome. That shit would be fucking cool. Mm -hmm. But is it true? Is it How credible is it that the government has been hiding this secret for generations? It may not even beat the government, though. You know, that's why, I mean, you have military to kind of, you know, 
keep things a secret from the government themselves. Well, people um, in the UFO community were saying that Obama was going to be the disclosure president. He was finally going to be the guy who came out and said, yeah, all of this has been happening. The guy has less than how many months does he have left in office? The election's in November. November, yeah. So he did attempt to release some nine one one papers. You may have to read about that. Yeah, yeah, that was that was cool. What was that? He released some nine one one disclosure papers. Really? Yeah. What kind of papers? Uh, I think they were talking about tie-ins with the Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think they're still missing. Uh, was twenty four, twenty eight pages from the official um, nine eleven Truth Commission report. Uh, that actually tie what happened. This sounds like another to... story. I'll be the guy with yeah. all the <laughs> hammy hands are going, hey, but that's another, that's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, people were saying that Obama's going to be the disclosure president. Now it's not looking so likely, so they're hoping if, if Hillary Clinton gets elected that she'll be the one to come out and say this is all true because... She's been talking about it for a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bill Clinton wanted to be the disclosure president, but supposedly... Well, how has she been talking about it? I don't know anything about her talking about it at all. And there were a couple of vague... Um, speeches that she gave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Just, think a couple yeah. of reporters asked her, like, "What are you going to do about the UFO thing? What are you going to release the files?" She made some offhanded comments about, you know, if I if I can get to the information, I'll release it. But it's the same thing that Bill Clinton said when he was in office. Yeah. Uh, but he was, what he said was that he was stonewalled by the CIA and couldn't do anything about it. And that's exactly what's happening. I mean, even the president himself would not have access to this information. So that kind of tells you that, I mean, the, the first commander in chief can't even get these kind of information. So, I mean, how are we supposed to get the evidence? Yeah, it's a, well, and you're suggesting that evidence would be only firsthand evidence is something that to you would make you go, I guess, transition from believer to knower. Then, you know, it would be your evidence as knowledge at that point. Yeah. If okay. you saw a UFO, if you... If they wheel out the craft or a piece of the engine or whatever, or if they demonstrate... Oh, right, technology. Yeah, as well. yeah. Okay. the technology. Okay. I yeah. would... Yeah, I'd be the first to believe it. If it's credible, of course. Like, Of course, uh, if I took the example of, let's say, go back in the time of Tesla. You don't know who Tesla is. Tesla goes, you know what, I got this from, from aliens. And then he presented his technology. You would believe him at that point, would you not? Like, you would have believed Tesla had alien technology at that point. Well, I... First, first of all, I think Tesla would, be the, <laughs> Tesla would be the guy who would not do that. Like, he wouldn't say this is from... Tesla was a fucking genius, and he'd be like, I made right. this shit. Other dude would do that. Though. Other space space rip off guy. What's <laughs> his name? <laughs> Tesla rip off guy? What's his face? Edison. The other one? Edison? Yeah, Edison, yeah. yeah. Edison would do that. Aliens. While killing an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> killing an elephant. <laughs> Aliens. Yeah, so it's, it's a very interesting debate, and just people who insist, well, you have to believe it. No, I don't have have to believe anything. Oh yeah, might I add, I don't like I don't necessarily have any beliefs, uh, thinking that there are aliens or anything like that. Like I don't mm -hmm. think I believe it or, or you know I, I mean naturally I assume aliens exist. It's a vast universe. Aliens exist, but whether or not they're traveling around here, I have no clue. You know, like, if they do exist, why would they come here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, why well, would they? A, that's the other thing too. I mean. You, know, you, you will find life on other planets, but they're not evolved enough you know, to travel through space and things like that. So, I mean, when you talk about aliens in space, there already are aliens in space. There is life out there. It's just not evolved enough for us to see it you know, flying around. So. Well, I think they would be, just not anywhere nearby. It's so huge, we're just not witnessing it. Like, I, There's no reason to believe that they wouldn't be, there wouldn't be more evolved creatures in space mm -hmm. far away. I mean, the universe is older than we are. Yeah. Uh, on this planet or this planet is. So it makes sense that there would be more evolved and able to travel and possibly travel across time and space mm -hmm. way more efficiently than we can and stuff like that, you know? But you're right, why would they come here? Mm -hmm. uh, and is that what we're seeing when we see these things that we think are UFOs and stuff like that, you know? I, well, the fact that our Earth is like, you know, we're, we're able to live here, we have the resources to kind of create life on its own here, why wouldn't they come here to kind of just observe and maybe take our resources at that. I don't, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a fair assumption. Uh, there's so many, the Kepler mission has discovered thousands of potential exoplanets within just a, a small distance from the, well, relatively small if you consider the size of the rest of the universe, but it, it should follow that there are other Earth-like planets way farther away from us. So why not go there? Like, they don't necessarily have to come to Earth because we're not, we're not that special when it comes down to it. 
Well, Sorry, we're we're not. Yeah, yeah right. Like but, we're like a little piece of sand on the beach, kind of thing. Like we're we're one beach in a giant ocean of other potentially habitable beach beaches. But a beach, I would even say we're like one of the little grains of sand in a beach. Sure. Above, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're way smaller. Yeah, yeah. That we're not special in well, the grander scheme of things. Well, you, I mean, yeah, you could say that, but to me, it's like what. Uh, what if we are the paradise of the universe, you know? What if we are one of the only ones that kind of inhabit life as we know it? Like beautiful life, like yeah, luscious exactly. life and green forests and stuff. Yeah, like that. I mean, I mean, if aliens were traveling through space, they'd have to have their reasons. If they were looking at other worlds, I mean, they may not be in the uh, structure that we're in right now, really. I mean, what if they're not traveling through space? What if they're traveling through time? Mm -hmm. no, I think that was part of the interview that as well. Interview. And yeah. it could be one and the same. Traveling through time, maybe traveling through space, or vice versa, right? Like, well, technically, I guess it is. I mean, if you consider relativity, like traveling through space is traveling through time, depending on how quickly you're going. Right. So and that brings create. up the whole multiverse of. You know. Yeah. yeah it, it, well, the whole multiverse thing is that. That's another, that's another podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Michael Jackson would not be disappearing in back in the future. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> but yeah, like, what, what if they're extra-dimensional beings? Just to, if you want to talk about the multiverse. What if they're coming here through some strange tear in the fabric of space-time? Like, that, oh, man, that just... People have been going on about how CERN has torn open this... Again, the black hole. Yeah, the black yeah. hole, and <laughs> weird things are coming through it. Like, and they're... Unfortunately, CERN did that whole fake human sacrifice prank a couple of weeks. Uh, I think it was last month or whatever. This all sounds very like H.P. Lovecraft. -ish. It was <laughs> it was really weird. Well, I don't know why they did it. Uh, some head up people at CERN came out a little while later saying, you know, they it, this wasn't authorized. We don't know what the hell was going on. But people aren't. They don't believe them. They don't believe the heads of CERN who who discredit these guys for doing this weird ass fucking pseudo satanist shit so what was it what did they do what was the pseudo satanist they, stuff? well basically it was filmed from the perspective of somebody in uh in a in one of the buildings overlooking a plaza that had a statue of ganesh in it and a bunch of rogue ganesh people, or, uh was it ganesh the uh, god uh, yeah well, it was i think oh, yeah. it was either ganesh or one of the other gods. Oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, are we talking is it a hindu god or what is this yeah it's uh, a hindu god in, in the middle of, of the uh, their uh their plaza in geneva i think it was might have been well, either way so it's filmed from that perspective there are a bunch of robed figures standing around with a bunch of like fires or you know things going on around them and eventually they bring out this woman make her kneel in front of this god statue and fucking stab her in the stomach and sacrifice her to this god and then the guy filming the video freaks out runs away and that's how it ends so that got leaked to the media it got blasted all over the internet it was all over facebook and people were like fucking cern is you know crazy they're doing all this weird ritualistic <laughs> crap opening portals to other dimensions and that, that's how fucking rumors get started people like to believe the supernatural they like to believe something really really weird is going on because they don't understand what they're doing at cern unfortunately that's how the human mind operates it, it has difficulty comprehending what it doesn't understand so immediately we'll jump on the easiest explanation and we'll assume that, hey, they're opening portals to other dimensions. Yeah. And Is that really the easiest way to explain something? <laughs> if you're a conspiracy theorist, then yeah, that'll be the, that'll be your go-to. Yeah, for sure. I would also think, too, that uh, just in experiencing suffering sort of thing, you would, you would want to break your reality and have something... Yeah, break your reality, I guess. You know, look at something in some other way, want something else from reality mm -hmm. than what you already have sort of thing. Yeah, so make sense. you make the leap and believe something supernatural is happening. Yeah, yeah. Just so you don't feel well, as... like God. The belief in God would right. be something like that. You know? Yeah, you want to you want to throw it at something else to break your reality. You know, <laughs> true. But yeah, like it, it, from from that stemmed a whole bunch of conspiracy theories about CERN. Uh, one of them happened to reinforce the Mandela effect. Unfortunately. Um, I guess we'll get into that in our next episode. <laughs> well, the Mandela effect would be a true, like, documented psychological effect it, that our sure. memory it's is memory accurate. Right. If anything, the Mandela effect proves the fact that human memory is god awful. Yeah, 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 yeah. On a grand scale, a For lot sure. of people misremember things together because we suck at remembering things. <laughs> this is why I would suggest, even if you saw a UFO, it would take a while. Let's say it was subtle. Let's say it appeared very slowly in the sky. 
what I'm saying is that I think it's possible our brains wouldn't even be able to take it in for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, you would just think it's something else or something, you know? I don't know. I don't know what would happen, but I think it, I think we go into shock. Yeah. And it's difficult to process things. Like, have you ever had that, heard that idea of, um, the, the first, the first people's not seeing the ships coming across when, uh, when, when, I don't know, Champlain was coming across with the ships and stuff, you know, and mm-hmm. them not being able to process it in their minds until like the, the witch doctor or whatever goes out and goes, no, look and see it kind of thing. You know? Right. Cause they had no concept of a giant sailing ship at that point. Right. right? right so right. They, they had nothing to, to qualify the experience. And I, you know, that's, that would be equally true if some alien craft were to suddenly materialize in front of us. We would not know how to, how to handle that because we, we don't have any uh, frame of reference for it. So, but again, Champlain wasn't an alien. So if some, but his ships were, they, well, technically they were alien. They were alien. They were Nothing had ever yet. been seen like that. So, but he yeah. wasn't from another planet. He wasn't a god coming to conquer them. At that point, in a sense, he was from another planet. You know what I mean? Like, the planet was cut <laughs> off. It was a cliff. He was coming from across from the okay, cliff. You, you know, know, you know what I mean. Actually, no, I don't know he, what, what they believe. That's what they believed. I don't yeah, know like what he, they believed. Yeah, but it, it, it would be the same thing with us. If some extraterrestrial craft were to arrive, we'd be like, fuck, what the hell is this thing? You know, it, who's, who knows? Like, what if it turned out not to be extraterrestrial? What if it turned out to be just some highly experimental government project that they're just, they accidentally decloaked in Manhattan? Or something? Right, right, right. People would panic. They'd all, probably automatically assume fucking aliens are here to destroy us. Yeah, yeah it, it would be a new thing, an alien thing in the sense that we had never seen it before, but not extraterrestrial, right? Like uh, from another planet. Is that what extraterrestrial means? Yeah. Just from another planet, yeah. like stemming from another planet, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, in the day and age we're living in now, I mean, if the government wanted to, they can fake these things. I mean, you have videos of floating cities over like China or Japan or whatever. Oh yeah, what's that stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, I matter. mean, it's still kind of unexplained. There's theories out there, but the whole thing is, uh, you know. The main theory is that the government faked it, that they used uh, sort of holographic images to kind of portray a city floating in the sky. So, you know, people right away started recording this floating city in the sky. At first, people thought it was a you know world from a different dimension and uh, you know this and that. But well, it's, you know. it's funny you should mention that because I just I saw the explanation of how that happened hmm. just a little while ago. It, it's a weird effect of how light refracts at just the right circumstances uh, usually happens over over water, and that's how originally people uh, thought the Flying Dutchman was a thing. It was just an inverted reflection of a real ship on the water, projected outwards into a, like a higher um, kind of higher plane of view. Mm-hmm. So this was just what they saw in China was just a weird ass reflection of Tokyo. Yeah, that's apparently the you know reason they're giving but then again if you look at the buildings that were floating in the sky it didn't really resemble any city in uh what is it tokyo i think it was tokyo yeah so i tokyo mean it didn't resemble anything it didn't really resemble Beijing. anything Might have been Beijing. yeah but whatever like, yeah so i mean if you look at it it didn't really resemble any city on earth so <laughs> i i don't know like i don't know what to make of that yeah so, for sure. okay so speaking uh talking about the ufo thing again could ufos like is there a theory out there that maybe we're just seeing through time like we're not actually seeing something that's physically there but we're seeing another point in time in human or not human but uh planetary history like something from the past or future i've heard that and i've also heard it we're looking at something crossing over from a parallel dimension yeah you know, i've there are a lot of different theories about there but again like Making jumping the the gun and saying this is from another world or this is from another dimension just because we don't understand what we're seeing is a huge leap in logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we're just we should should we be talking in terms of just presenting facts kind of thing? Well, no, I'm just theories? you know I'm speaking in general. It's it's people make that leap in logic all the time, right? And because we we don't know how to interpret our own reality. And Can't even trust yourself when you look at these things. So. Exactly. Like if I saw something out there, my, being the you know the skeptic, scientifically inclined person I am, if I saw something right now, I would not immediately think, "Oh my God, I have to analyze this and jot down notes and be like you know scientific method about it." I'd fucking I'd, I'd shoot myself because I I would not understand. My brain would not comprehend what I'm seeing. You know, I'd love to think that I'd be able to take a step back and and analyze it from a rational point of view, but in the moment. 
I don't think I would. In the moment, I would just, I would, I would lose it. I would be like, what the hell am I saying? Well, we'd have to be very calm, I guess. Right. Like, let's say we were in like a deep state of meditation or something like that. We might be able to deal with it if it occurred at that point or something like that. Sure. But how many of us go around every day in a deep state of meditation? Just point blank all the time. Yeah. And it's something that if we were to see, we'd have to be prepared to see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to have it come out. Yeah. I mean, you know, UFO comes out of the sky, touches down, introduces itself. Yeah, Most of us are going to run the other way. <laughs> I mean, hostile or not, we're, we're definitely... Uh, would you run you the know, other way? I don't know. I don't know what my reaction would be. I, don't know, I, think, I, I think I'd like to... I'd like to stick around and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, my, yeah, I totally would have thought so too, but no, I ran like shit. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's, that's something else. I mean, when you're seeing lights in the sky that are coming at you, I mean, you don't know if it is hostile or not. I mean, what if you were to get abducted and we'd never see you again? You yeah, know? I don't like, even think there's a thought that far. It's really yeah. just a, I don't know what that is, run. run. Like, as soon as you witness something that you can't understand, you yeah. just run. Mm -hmm. you know? And maybe because we've been exposed to, you know, monster stories and stuff like that, you know, like, this is, this is what we... That's the other side of it. I mean, the way the media portrays aliens, I mean, they're always hostile. I don't think we've seen a movie where they're not hostile, so... Yeah, like, yeah. Independence yeah. Day. Better they're, drama, they're, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> aliens are always hovering over major cities and blowing them to crap and i think that really influences our, our interpretation of events if we do happen to see something unidentified that we can't explain it yeah. like immediately our minds are going to uh, associate it to something that we're familiar with in this case mass media alien portrayals of beings coming down to blow us to fucking hell yeah um sure. but yeah i think i don't know where i was going with that. what are we talking about abduction yeah you mentioned abductions like why why is it that if if these are aliens and they are taking people, why are they always taking Farmer Joe in the middle of nowhere? They're the easiest ones to not believe. I would think anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I remember reading William S. Burroughs, uh, I think it's in his, his last diary, like his last book, and he was really interested in meeting the Greys, heard all about them, you know, wanted to be abducted. But what he felt he noticed looking at it was that only people of lower intelligence were being uh, abducted by aliens kind of thing for some reason. Right. I do know of one person, and I won't name any names or anything, but the claims to have been abducted by an alien uh, calls them her friends and stuff like that, you know? Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from Elma, like the, the Witchwood area kind mm -hmm. of thing, you know? Uh, and there was a guy actually from Witchwood in Elmer, Elmer, Quebec, that, uh, <laughs> that claimed that the aliens visited him and cured his cancer and then went to the doctors, and his cancer had been miraculously cured. Aliens cured his cancer. Aliens cured the cancer. He was supposed to spread the word that they were here I wonder if they can help lose 50 pounds as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could look into the story. I mean, I don't know. Supposedly, it was in the Elmer Bulletin, so we should be able to find something like that. that we can do. Um, See, that... I, uh, <laughs> that that would be proof of a technology there, no, for example. No, it wouldn't. Cancer is known for going into remission spontaneously. Okay. It happens. Right. So... Apparently marijuana cures cancer, so I mean... You know. There's some root oh, here that yeah. they discovered as well. It's cured in like 48 hours. Kind of thing. Really? Yeah, that's a recent one. Facebook oh. said... Facebook oh, said... Okay, well, Facebook <laughs> said that it has to be true. Everything, you, everything online has to be real. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, why would they put it up? But yeah, like, it, cancer does spontaneously go into remission. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does tend to happen. Uh, so, I don't know where that leap is coming from. Like, what well, that leap is coming from that guy claiming. It. Yeah. That's what, that what did he from. see and why is he associating it to a spontaneous cancer? Well, some people uh, trace the alien abduction thing back to that, uh, that condition where you can't, sleep the, the sleep paralysis thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, so visuals there, there's a lot of commonalities. Uh, a lot of people experience sort of a ghost type thing. Like insidious is suggested that movie insidious is, is suggested to be, just about sleep paralysis mm -hmm. and a lot of the common things that they, the, the mythos of it sort of thing, you know, right. and that one's been tied in with the alien one too, that mythos. Yeah, like, it's interesting that the, the mythos surrounding sleep paralysis evolves according to the time that we're living in. Back in, you know, medieval ages when Christianity was the hot ticket item, people experiencing sleep paralysis would immediately assume that they were being possessed by a demon. And today, since aliens are the big thing, if, you know, then maybe I'm being abducted. So a phenomenon has a tendency to, like I said, evolve over time and adopt the mythos of the common era. Yeah, you're right. 
I'm thinking of like the Mary Shelley, the common painting of her with the the demon on her bed, the little, the little right. demon thing. See that? So yeah, it's, that's... it's always like a little creature, kind exactly. of thing that comes in at night or whatever. usually sitting on your chest or you know just stopping you from breathing. Type yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <clears throat> that's terrifying. I don't think I'd ever want that to happen. Yeah, well, kind of had my own experiences with the paranormal. I mean, I talked to you about it uh, <laughs> the month when I, my sister went away to Mexico. And uh, this is me living at my apartment on my own there. I had a couple of different experiences, but uh, the one that really freaked me out was uh, laying in my bed, looking at the corner of my bed, and it just kind of lowers, like the, the corner of the bed kind of lowered as if somebody was sitting there. And, you know, at that point, you kind of feel like there's something there. You freak out, and, yeah, I was wide awake at that time. So, you know, it was a... Uh, Definitely a weird experience. To so, have. like the covers kind of went down. The no, bed, well, the yeah, the, like as, it was as if somebody sat in the corner of my bed. Like you could see the bed just kind of lower itself, and you know there's nothing there. So, what do you attribute it to? To me, paranormal. I mean, that was the first thought that went through my head. There's a ghost sitting right in the corner of my bed there. But of course, I mean, you don't see anything. You kind of just have to. Yeah, all thoughts after they're after we're, after witnessing it are basically not trustable. Like mm-hmm. you're just associating scary thoughts to it or whatever. For sure, sort of but yeah. uh, you know that was the one that was like day night one, let's say night two. I'm uh, waking up to my cover or like my blanket being pulled away from me. Oh, really? I yeah, know. yeah. So I've experienced things like that. Uh, I mean, this sounds like a whole other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we're talking about proof and things that are unbelievable in a, in a lot of ways. I, the, yeah, like the paranormal is one of the, is the most notoriously difficult thing to have to to prove scientifically. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't. I'm not necessarily a believer in the paranormal. I'm certainly not a believer in the supernatural by any stretch of the imagination. Same here, and I never thought I would be. Even still, to this day, I still don't believe what I saw, but because I experienced it, it's always in the back of your mind. Mm. So, did you experience it with anyone else? No, I was. Uh, you were alone. I was alone. Basically, my sister had gone on vacation for a month, and in that month, I felt like I was just being harassed by <laughs> really yeah, yeah 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 did anyone else there have any of their own experiences alone or anything like that or? no because there was never a moment where they would have been alone um oh, okay so i mean like my sister going on vacation was just for that month we uh, where's this place where alta vista towers that's where i used to live alta and vista uh, towers. yeah so on alta vista drive by industrial so one of there, the apartments there one of the apartments there it's one of the three main buildings that are there and i mean we have you know, jumpers like that happened at least once every couple months. Jumping out of the building window. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you know, there were ex- like situations like that where you would have uh, a whole squad, uh, you know, show up because somebody uh, jumped in the building. So Good Lord. yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, does that actually relate it to my experiences? I don't know. I'll never know. I mean, but to sur- to think that you know, to go through what I went through. And kind of being tortured for that month, I felt like you come out of it believing something else, believing something new. But it's still tough to kind of identify anything because you're just basing it off your own memories, your own experiences. And I think that has often led to people making all kinds of spurious claims about what they what they believe versus what's actually true. Mm-hmm. And again, going back in history, people who experience uh, you know an ecstatic state. For whatever reason, be it through intense meditation or heavy, heavy prayer, it's been it's been proven from a scientific point of view, from a neurological point of view, that you can induce these states of mind just by meditating for a long period of time. You can have these ecstatic states. You can have a vision of what most people would consider to be the divine, but that you're just doing it to yourself. But back then, or even today, with people who are uh, you know more relig- religiously inclined, they'll attribute that to something supernatural to a vision of god to and it, like some kind of religious experience because that's their frame of reference but in reality it's just the brain reacting to a certain set of stimuli that that causes all kinds of problems you know so to, again to make that leap and just assume that what you, what i experienced is supernatural because i don't know what else to say it was that kind of it, it's it's kind of a conversation stopper. For sure. You know, I, I'm, I don't know what you saw, Jose. I don't, like, 
I don't know in if this I case, wanted. I guess more felt. More yeah. felt. Well, you yeah. saw the mattress thing, and I guess felt the covers. Yeah. Did you see the covers moving? Or? Yeah. I, I basically I held on to my blanket, and they were still being pulled away from me. Like you felt the something something else pulling. Forcing, yeah. You know, something and else pulling. at the end of the bed, basically, where you know you don't want to look over, but once it starts going, it's. <laughs> and it's not like you lost circulation in your legs, your legs are weighing it down, and your legs are actually pulling it, and you don't realize it. Nothing like, like that, no. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. I mean, to wake up to have your blanket being pulled from you when you know you're supposed to be alone in your apartment, scary yeah, thought. It's pretty scary. No so, pets or anything like that? No actually? pets, no nothing at the time. So, yeah, I mean. Was it aliens? If it was, they didn't show themselves. So. <laughs> That's but, uh, that's messed up. Yeah. I I don't I don't know what you saw. I don't know what you felt. Yeah, no, for sure. And then and I mean, for me to kind of say it out loud, it it sounds crazy. Of course, it sounds crazy. But it's an ex- something that I experienced, right. and it's something that I'm gonna have in the back of my mind for the rest of my life. I mean, it's not something you can go through it easily. You know? so, yeah, in a sense, it's it, like you don't know how to file it. Kind of exactly. thing. Like, that's how I feel about the uh, this unidentified flying object thing, or perhaps hovering. Right. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, you don't phenomenon. you don't know where to put it. You don't know what it is. Yeah, really. yeah. You just sort of remember what you feel you witnessed, at least. For and sure. Don't know where to put it. It kind of, yeah, and it feels weird to talk about it because yeah. you, in a sense, don't. I don't believe it. You know. Right. Yeah, I still so even it. like yourself, who was probably the biggest skeptic here, if you were to experience something like that, how would you come out of it? Well, exactly. Like I, I don't think I would come out of it any different than I am now. Yeah. But I'm just saying that from the perspective of not having gone through it. Yeah. Uh, like I would like to think I would still retain my rationality and my, my skepticism because that's how I that's how I go about, you know, life in general. Yeah. Uh, I embrace the scientific method. I'm a huge fan of, of science in general. I'm not just talking about, you know, the flashy science that we see in on uh, Facebook pages like I fucking love science. I'm talking about the actual methodology that goes behind it. I'm really interested in the research and the tireless really really boring shit that goes into like an actual scientific study for sure to me that i don't know i'm a huge nerd so that kind of thing is really cool to me um but yeah like i i don't know how i would react if i experienced anything like that i know from i know for a fact that i would investigate it yeah i would do my due diligence and i would try to get to the bottom of what it is that actually happened at the end of the day i don't know if i'd be able to either prove it or disprove it but i know for sure i would approach it scientifically yeah and i think that's the problem here is that Unless you've been impacted by something like this, you wouldn't know or you wouldn't believe, of course. Like, you know, how could you? I mean, and the ones that have been impacted are still left. Like, do you actually believe? (laughs) Right. So, I mean, even then. I guess in a sense you don't have to believe. It still happened. And you you still have it as evidence. You just, yeah, belief doesn't even have to be attributed. Well, that's right. Like, you don't have to believe it because it happened, right? But what happened? No. Is what I'm ultimately interested in. Yeah. Like, what is it that really took place? Like I, I don't know. Uh, you know, investigating your case, Luke, at this point is probably virtually impossible because it was so long ago. Yeah, there is no evidence. Right. It leaves no. Yeah, there is no trail. Yeah, you, know, you can't my, find. Them. Like my ass fell fine the next morning. <laughs> there was no missing time or anything. You don't have a little chip in your leg or anything. No, 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 no scars. There's that, a weird mole back here. Yeah, you're not playing with. Hit the back of your ears, maybe. You know. Yeah, so you know, it'll whatever you went through will remain, unfortunately, unexplained. A mystery. Yeah. It's always a mystery. It's always a mystery. Yeah. All you can do is wonder. <laughs> wonder. That's all you can do. Well, I think uh, this is a good place to wrap it up. So thanks for being with us, Luke. Uh, I don't know if you want to plug the band before we go. Oh, uh, no, not necessarily. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a band called Monster Crunch, but uh, check them out if you yeah. haven't. Uh, it was it was actually the, the the UFO experience was witnessed by both of us, and uh, she was interested in being part of the podcast. Unfortunately, she was away actually visiting her folks at Bedford Mills again, <laughs> sort of thing, which I hear is a hot spot for ufo activity or something like that yeah around there around that part uh, like around the kingston area i guess it's it's about half an hour outside of kingston okay um but yeah yeah so Uh, check out muffler crunch um i'm mark i'm jose and thanks for listening to our first episode of critical junction we will catch you again next time